The Book of Revelation The Book of Revelation was written by John of Patmos, but we don't exactly know who this John was. He could have been John the Apostle, or John the Presbyter or Elder, or maybe some other John. If the book was written by one of the apostles, it seems unlikely that he would list the names of the apostles as a group distinct from himself. Also, the Greek of the Gospel of John is fairly grammatical, whereas the Greek found in Revelation is not. However, this may be because the author's native language wasn't Greek, but rather Aramaic or Hebrew. There's no way to know for sure whether John the Apostle or some other John wrote the book. John was apparently a very common name among early Christians. The book was probably written around AD 95. The earliest external evidence for the book of Revelation is a statement coming from Irenaeus, who said that the book was seen at around the end of the reign of Domitian, who was emperor of Rome from 81 to 96. It also seems likely that the book was written after the destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70 by Titus, since by this point Babylon had become a symbolic name for Rome in Jewish literature. The letter of 1 Peter uses this language as well, the view being that Rome had become just another Babylon, an evil empire. Babylon had destroyed the first Jewish temple, and Rome destroyed the second. A day after the temple's destruction would also possibly fit the description of the temple in chapter 11, where John writes that the temple's outer court had been handed over to Gentiles for 42 months. The book was written to the seven churches of Asia Minor, and it affirms the hope of Christians for a transformation of the world where evil will be destroyed and Christ's universal reign will be accomplished. The book presents an apocalypsis or unveiling of unseen realities, both in heaven as it is now and on earth as it will be in the future. The author attempts to bring a message of hope for persecuted believers suffering from government tyranny and tries to place their suffering in cosmic perspective. There are a number of different methods of interpreting this book, including four main ones, the preterist, the historicist, the futurist, and the idealist approach. The preterist approach believes that Revelation is simply a sketch of the conditions of the empire in the first century. Although one cannot divorce the interpretation of this book from its occasion, this view cannot adequately handle all the data of Revelation, for the author makes plain that this work is a work describing the future. The historicist view, or continuous historicist view, contends that Revelation is a symbolic presentation of the entire course of the history of the church from the close of the first century to the end of time. The futurist approach usually argues that all of the visions from Revelation 4.1 to the end of the book are yet to be fulfilled in the period immediately preceding and following the second advent of Christ. This approach is more of a literalist approach. In the idealist approach, the Revelation represents the eternal conflict of good and evil which persists in every age, although here it may have particular application to the period of the church. But like the preterist view, this approach does not do justice to the predictive elements in the book. The book begins with a prologue starting with the author's self-identification and the basis for his authority, divine revelation. The text is identified as a revelation of what must soon take place. The revelation was sent from God to Jesus, to the angel, to John, to the churches. The next part contains greetings and a doxology. The letter is addressed to the seven churches in the province of Asia. A blessing of grace and peace is given to the reader from the one who was, and is, and is to come. The seven spirits before the thrones and Jesus Christ also send their blessings. Jesus is identified as the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth, our lover, our liberator from sin, the one who made us a kingdom of priests and worthy of praise. We then come to the doxology. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. The next part of the book is John's vision of Christ. Here the writer identifies himself as John, and says that he, like others, has endured suffering for Jesus, and that he is on the island of Patmos because of the testimony of Jesus. He says that he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, when he heard a trumpet-like voice behind him telling him to write down what he saw, and to send it to the seven churches. He then turned to see seven gold lampstands and a fiery man, bright as the sun, holding seven stars in his hand, and with a sword coming out of his mouth. John then faints, and the man touches him and tells him not to be afraid. The man identifies himself, saying, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. 
The man then says that the seven stars represent seven messengers, and the seven lamps represent the seven churches. The next section of the book contains Jesus' letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. John directs the record of his visions to the seven churches in the province of Asia, which incorporated approximately the western third of Asia Minor. His words to the churches contain evidences that he was familiar with the local conditions and traditions of these churches, which may have been personally known to him from his association with that area. His reason for selecting these seven churches, as well as the order in which the churches are listed, probably has to do with geography and communications. The cities in which the churches are located are all centers of communication, and a messenger bearing revelation to the cities would arrive at Ephesus from Patmos, travel by a secondary road north to Smyrna and Pergamum, and then go east on the Roman road to Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea.